This is a device called Metric Modulator, and what it does is automatically create uh, metric modulations by duplicating a scene in live and giving that scene a, uh, a name that contains a tempo. And that tempo change, or that tempo will preserve the sound of the duplicated clip by stretching the notes in opposition to the change of tempo. And the way that you use the device is by making a selection of notes in a clip and then specifying a new amount of time, metric time, that those notes should fit into. And then the device calculates the tempo change necessary to make that happen while preserving the sound. So what does any of this mean? Metric modulation is a fairly complicated uh, musical process, but it's one that we're used to hearing implied by interesting syncopated rhythms all the time. So normally to work out a metric modulation, you need to do some math. And the math is figuring out things like how many of this type of note would need to be heard in what amount of time uh, to equal this particular type of rhythm. The device makes it so that you don't have to think about any of those things. And so I want to explain what metric modulation is in a way that also doesn't deal with that level of abstraction. So to start, I'm going to play a pattern of continuous hi-hat notes that have no sort of accent to them at all. And let's think about what it is that we're hearing here. I'm not going to show you the clip. We're just going to listen to this sound. So it's a continuous stream of hi-hats. And there's nothing here that's implying a beat in any particular place. So we might listen to this and think, ah, those are 16th notes. And so we might have a sense of where that beat is. But they might not be 16th notes. They might be something else. The beat might occur every, uh, every nth number of these notes. There's nothing here that's indicating the beginning and end of a phrase at all. So if it were 16th notes, we would hear some type of beat reference every four, right? And it would sound something like this. So every four of these hi-hats, we hear now a kick drum, accenting what it is that we, we're, we're determining the beat to be. But what if instead, we'll go back to our original beatless reference, what if we heard instead a beat every six of these notes? This is slower right? We hear this at a different tempo. And now what we might say is that those notes are 16th note triplets. The hi-hat notes are 16th note triplets, but they haven't changed. The difference between this and this is a tempo change, but the hi-hats themselves are playing at exactly the same speed. What if instead those hi-hats were accented by a kick drum note every three. Now it sounds faster. And what if instead those accents happened every five? So in each of these examples, we've heard something that sounded like a tempo change, but the original pattern of hi-hat notes hasn't changed. Here's four. Here's six. Here's three. And here's five. And again, here's this stream of notes with no accents at all. So then we might ask ourselves, what is the tempo here? Well, there's, we've heard now five possible different tempos, four possible different tempos. The one with the beat reference every four sixteenths or every four events, every six, every three, and every five. Those are, there's a very specific re, uh, proportional relationship between those things. This is what the metric modulator device does. So now let's take a look at what this clip started its life as. Here's a stream of notes. There happen to be six of them, uh, no, seven, but this is arbitrary. It doesn't really matter how many there are. 
if we wanted to say that we want these every four, we want the, we want the beat to be every four, we could set a loop here and then put a kick drum here. But if we actually want to change live's tempo, uh, you, well, in this case, what our tempo is is 80 beats per minute. If we then set this to every six, what is this tempo? This isn't 80 beats per minute anymore. We're repeating this event every six, uh, every six sixteenth notes. But what we want to hear is what does this quarter note sound like? If we turn the metronome on now, that's what we want to hear. And that sounds like this. If I turn the metronome on now, now we're hearing the beats as they are. The tempo has changed here again, and here again. So what the metric modulator device does is allow you to select a range of time, or a number of notes that brackets a range of time, and say, make the last selected note end X metric time after the first selected note, but don't change the way it sounds. So how would we do that here? We have this example of hi-hat notes before. We've set this to be 80 beats per minute. And if we want six of these notes to represent the beat, we can, we'll, what we do is we select seven notes here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and we say, make this one be precisely one quarter note after the first one. And we push go. And now we've created a new pattern here, which looks a little different, but sounds exactly the same. But if we look at the tempo now, we see that we've gone from 80 beats per minute to 53.33 beats per minute. That's the tempo necessary to make six of those original notes fit into the time that four of those notes fit into before, but sound the same. And here's the metronome. And here it is before. So if we want our kick drum now to appear uh, every beat, we just need to put it every beat. We'll have this repeat now every beat. Because now the beat is 53.33, there are 53.33 beats per minute, and we've packed our hi-hat notes, six of those hi-hat notes, into that amount of time. If we want instead our three hi-hat note pattern to become the new beat, we say we want the fourth note to be one note after. Uh, wait, I need to go back to 80 beats per minute, so we can make this work in relation to 80, not 53. And now again, we've done this, and the tempo change is 106.67. So you end up with these very interesting looking um, tempos because they're very precise. They're very precise ratio relationships of the original. So that's what we need for three. This is what we need for six. And if we want five, we select one, two, three, four, five, six notes. And we say we want the sixth note to begin exactly one quarter note away. Uh, again, I did this from the wrong tempo. Let's go back to our 80 beats per minute and do this again. Six notes. And again, now we hear At 64 beats per minute, five of these hi-hat notes fit into exactly one beat. 
So what the metric modulation is doing is calculating exactly the tempo that's necessary to make that many notes, the selected number of notes, fit into, well, that one was an anomaly. That's a weird one. To make exactly the selected number of notes fit into one beat. And we can hear what's happening. The tempo is changing, but the sound of the original pattern is not. Now, normally a metric modulation is used to calculate a new beat based on some number of notes in another, uh, in another tempo reference. And so that's the default selection here, one quarter note. But we can also say we have a whole other range of note possibilities here and multiples of those. So if we decided instead that we want our, our hi-hats to be, let's pick something absurd, and say that we want five of those to fit into three eighth note triplets. Oh, that's exactly the same. Fascinating. Let's say four eighth note triplets instead. So we end up, we can now create these very bizarre metric modulations, which are maybe not so interesting musically, but it's possible to do that. Normally, I would leave the metric modulator set to one quarter note, because usually what you're trying to do with a metric modulation is figure out a new beat reference based on a rhythm uh, or on a particular pattern of notes from the old, um, from the old tempo. So I hope that gives you some idea of how metric modulation works, if you're not familiar with that principle before, and then also how the metric modulator device uh, can make this the process of creating these kinds of rhythmic relationships much easier than having to try to figure this stuff out by hand. Enjoy!